Thank you. Uh, well, yesterday we heard a paper about uh, homicide in uh, Athens, yes, so today uh, I will speak about a uh, special kind, kind of homicide in Rome, so about parricide. Punishment of the sack, so Latin pena culei, was in Roman law a death penalty imposed on a person who committed a crime of parricide. Found guilty of this crime was sewn up in a sack with such animals as uh, a dog, monkey, snake, uh, and a cock, and he was thrown into the river or uh, a sea. The crime of parricide was penalized according to uh, Plutarch and uh, Festus in regal period. So the laws uh, called uh, Leges Regie, introduced by um, uh, Romulus and Numa Pompilius, are thought uh, to regulate this matter. So I, I will not speak about, about the authenticity, yes, about like, uh, of Leges Regie, but uh, you can see uh, two passages, yes, in your handout. So this is number one and number two. So these are the passages that refer to parasite. According to the first of them, every homicide should be called par parasite. Regulation established by Numa Pompe Pompilius indicated that only a person who intentionally uh, killed a free man should be considered as uh, paricidas. Unfortunately, preserved fragments of these laws do not inform us how the culprits were punished for, for this crime. The second norm indicates a capital penalty, so we have uh, morti duit, but it doesn't uh, precise the way of executing this punishment. According to Duncan Cloud, murderers uh, must have been handed over to the family of the victim to exact their vengeance. Towards the end of the third century before Christ, the punishment of murderers became the affair of uh, the Roman state, as, the, as Cloud says, and that was the time when uh, pena culei, so this punishment of the sack, was introduced. At the beginning, punishment of the sack was executed uh, on the parasites, probably without animals, so the inclusion of live animals uh, in the sack is documented from early imperial, uh, imperial period. Uh, and uh, even then only snakes are mentioned, yes, so at first only snakes. First literary works which attest this punishment are uh, Plotus comedies, and today I wish to present the passages uh, from the plays which allude to the punishment and to the crime, yes, to the crime of parasite. Um, so, First of all, uh, Panacule is depicted in the comedy entitled uh, Epidicus, and this is passage number three. Although none of the terms denoting this punishment is explicit, explicitly used by Plotus. However, these verses contain a, a pun, a wordplay, exploiting a word parenticida, which alludes to the crime of parasite. The word is used by the slave Epidicus in a conversation with a young man, Stratipocles. The latter is uh, clear, clearly su surprised hearing the word, uh, which becomes evident when he says, quid istuk est verbi, what kind of word is that? The question suggests that the word was not quite clear and must have been a neologism of sorts. Its neologistic nature is confirm confirmed by the slave's further utterance when he says that he does not at all care for old-fashioned and everyday words. So, nil moro vetera et vulgata verba. It must therefore be understood that Epidicus creates and uses a new word with full awareness and clearly st stresses that parenticida is a neologism. The word parenticida was undoubtedly created from the composition of the verb of parents and verbal uh, suffix cedere. In this way, a word meaning parent killer 
was created, resembling, of course, the legal uh, term parisida. Therefore, we may assume that etymological hypothesis made by Christian and Isidore stating that paricida originates from this word parenticida cannot be true. In fact, in, it is another way around. So this neologism parenticida is much younger and imitates the, li the legal term. <coughs> The neologism Panticida also serves in the comedy to construct uh, this combination, a, a little bit surprising, yes, of words. Tuum patrem faciem parenticidam. I will make your father a parent killer. In this way, uh, a paranomastic wordplay between these words, pater and parenticida, is formed, and it is. Um, Another allusion, yes, so to the term paritida. Undoubtedly, in, t in this quoted passage, the slave refers also to the punishment imposed by Roman law uh, for the parasite, so the penalty of the sack. The references may be found in line 351 in the uh, epithets peratus and folitus. These are epithets originating from different names for a bag, for a sack. Pera is a bag for food, while folis means a money bag. So the slaves juxtaposes these two different names deliberately in order to be able to state that although others may lead persons in a food bag, he will lead them in a money bag. It should be interpreted uh, that he will rob the father of money. Yes, so he will put him in a money bag. The discussed epithets make the spectator think of a bag, although the correct word, kuleus, does not even appear in the text. Thus, two synonyms describe a sack and in a comic way refer to the punishment pena kulei. Allusions to the crime of parasite are also present in the passage, as, as I have said before, though the exact word paritida does not occur in the text. The whole dialogue has such a meaning. The slave describes how he intends to obtain money from the father of Stratipocles. He will definitely deceive an old man, uh, this old man, yes, the father, who will give the money thus unknowingly um, robbing himself. So the slave states that the father will become a parent killer, so he will, he will in some way commit a finan financial suicide, yes, so he will let the slave rob him. Uh, so I don't agree with uh, Carlo Lanza, who uh, wrote in his recent article that uh, this joke means that the father cannot be a parent killer because he's too old and his parents are probably dead. So he interprets this joke really strangely because the joke is of financial, financial nature. Yes, so the father is a parent from Stratipocles' point of view and that is why the joke means that the father will kill himself, yes, not his parents. The word paritida and paritidium are employed by Plotus in other comedies, uh, Rudens and uh, Pseudolus. <coughs> Most of the scholars think that they are used in a metaphorical meaning um, and they depict a scoundrel, not a real murderer. If you read the passage number four, we, we will in fact find the word uh, paritidium in such an expression. So the lines 651 to 53 comprise a list of terms of abuse which refer to the character of a pimp in the play. The slave Trajalio insults the pimp using many epithets, among which there is also plenissimus paricidi. So in Nixon's translation, this is parasito monster. Yes, so really full of parasite verbatim, we would say. 
list of these epithets is concluded by uh, one word, Leno, the pimp. So this one seems the worst of the insults. Uh, so this is a stylistic figure of climax, of course, and this one is the strongest, yes, this, this word. The second passage, which may contain the word paricida, is uh, in such a metaphorical meaning, is from the play uh, Pseudonus. Uh, so this is passage number five. Uh, and these lines comprise a dialogue between young Kalidorus, his slave Pseudonus, and a pink balio. First mentioned characters prepare a list of insults uh, addressed to, a pimp, to the pimp, and um, among these terms uh, of abuse also occurs the word paricida. According to, uh, for example, Maci Yonca, this legal term is used in the text of a play as a colloquialism describing a scoundrel, yes, a villain. Um, well, I have to agree with, agree with this opinion, but uh, I would like also uh, to consider one more aspect of this scene. Some scholars point out that the whole dialogue takes a form of so-called flagitatio, which was a non-judicial custom, a form of bringing justice by publicly pressing requests, demands or claims. In the passage, um, Flagitatio is addressed to the pimp, we, uh, who doesn't want to sell a girl meretrix to the young man, to Calidorus. What is interesting is that this Flagitatio contains many expressions which may relate to various crimes according to law. Paricida is only one of them, but we may also notice in the text epithets re referring to Violin, violating graves, this is bustirapus, robbing sacred property, sacrilegus, committing theft, fur, furcifer, or breaking the law in a different manner, legerupa. What is interesting is that many of these expressions are neology, neologism, probably created by the, the author of the play to achieve linguistic comicality in the text. Such neologisms are bustirapus, so this is hapax legomenon in Latin, so it occurs only in this one text. And this means the one who violates graves. Legerupa, this is the noun which appears only in Plotus comedies, and this, and this one means the one who breaks the law. Sotifraudus, this is also Hapax Legomenon, understood the one who cheats his partner. It is also possible that these expressions have been translated by Plotus from Greek or original. For example, Paritida might have had in Greek comedy an equivalent in words Patroktonos, Patrophonos, or Patrophontes. According to uh, Walde Hoffman's etymological dictionary, Paricida might have followed Greek patraloias, <coughs> meaning uh, a father slayer. What is more, Ugo Paoli suggests that Plotus created the noun legerupa following the example of Greek paranomon, understood as legem transgrediens, so violent, the one who violates the law. Transgresses, yes, the law. Walde Hoffman's dictionary also suggests that Bustirapus imitates perhaps Greek timborichos. According to Friedrich Leo, Leo uh, the fragment, uh, the whole dialogue, yes, originates from Greek comedy and is very similar to the passage from Aristophanes' play uh, entitled uh, Clouds. Yes, so there are lines 900, uh, 908 to 912 uh, where we find similar words, but these are only two. So this is Bomolochos and Patraloias. So we can see that only Patraloias is here, yes? Bomolochos means something 
a little bit different. It means, from, for example, stealing from the altar. Um, this scholar, Leo, even believes that the phrase, phrase verbera visti patrem ad quematrem imitates Greek, this uh, Greek word patraloias and matraloias, so the one who slays father and mother. On the other hand, another scholar, Edward Frankel, thinks that the whole sequ sequence is Roman. He believes, just like Usener, that the invective scene shows Italic custom, both in content and in form. So we have two different opinions. Yes, one says that it's Greek, and the second that it's Roman. Also, the same scholar, Franco, uh, Franco marks in one note, yes, in his work, uh, Plotine Elements in Plotus, so how much there is Plotus in his place, uh, that the scene could have had a Greek core and Latin elaboration. So there was original Greek, yes, but Plotus developed. I wish to consider this one last, uh, this last explanation and compare uh, Calidorus uterans with Roman legal sources, especially with regulation made by Sergius Tullius, uh, Tullius, and we have this passage number six. As we can see, the same verb occurs in Plotus comedy, so verbera visti, and in legal source. Yes, berberit. All the more objects evoked by this verb in both statements are very similar. So in Lex Regia we have berberit parentem, in the comedy berbera visti patrem ad fematrem. In my opinion, the text of the play alludes here to the mentioned Roman regulation. It is an of often practice of Plotus to imitate the original, but also to develop the text by adding some Roman elements. And this is what happens in this passage. Um, moreover, I think that the playwright not only refers to the regulation of uh, Servius Tullius, Tullius concerning physical abuse on a parent, but he also alludes to the crime of parasite. The allusion is made by the pimp who answers the accusation of Calidorus in such manner. Ad que oxidi quoque. He means ad que patrem et matrem oxidi quoque. So he admits that he not only has beaten his father and mother, but he also killed them. The verb oxido, yes, seems to refer to this crime, to the parasite. The same expression is used, for example, by uh, Cicero, uh, who writes about parasite. So he writes in the Inventione, Fidam judicatus est parentem oxidisse. So parentem oxidisse, yes, the same uh, word. And in the digests, in the descriptions of Lex Pompeia de Paricidis, Lego Pompeia de Paricidis, Covetur ut siquis patrem matrem, and other members of family, oxiderit. So we have the same expressions. Therefore, I believe that the phrase ad que octidi quoque refers to the parasite crime and regulation. Thus, we have two allusions to uh, legis regia, possibly, in this one verse of the comedy. The pimp himself confirms that his deeds may be cons uh, considered as crimes when he ironically asks if he has done anything wrong at all, non peccavi kvipiam. So, do you think I have done anything wrong? Yes. The verb pecare is one of the terms denoting wrongdoing uh, in Roman moral discourse, perhaps, I don't know, maybe in legal sources, peccatum. I tried to search this one, but there are many names for the crime, yes. <clears throat> so it may refer to both crimes, yes, possibly, uh, pointed in this passage. Um, <clears throat> of course, both references are of uh, metaphoric nature, um, 
and in a comical way present relations between characters in the play. Uh, Kalidorus Calidor doesn't want to be titled together with his slave, the pimps, Cleteres, so we have in the text Cantores, uh, as Balio ironically, ironically names them instead of calling them critics or attackers. This, uh, that is why the young man claims that they have been beaten, abused by the pimp in such way. Whereas Balio jokes about finishing the whole conversation and the catalog of insults by killing his interlocutors. He says that he prefers to kill them rather than to feed them further. So by feeding them, he means giving them reasons for more insults. And by killing them, he has in mind that he wants to silence them. Uh, summarizing this passage, so I believe that we have two allusions, yes, to parasite uh, in this passage. So the first one is the word parasida, uh, used explicitly as a term of abuse, and the second is in the metaphor. What is interesting that in the same comedy we have also a reference to the punishment of the sack, and this is passage number seven. So this is an earlier passage. The utterance is made by the pimp, Balio, who wants his meretrix, uh, who is called Xlistis, yes, in the passage, he wants this meretrix to bring, to bring him sex of oil from her lovers. Yes, so she has rich lovers, they, so she should bring uh, bags of oil for the pimp. If not, if not he will bring her into the sack. The word kuleus is exploited here to name the oil sex and, to, and a sack for a person. So there is also a verb, um, there is also a verb in the text indicating the spena kulei, and this is a verb deportare. This word suggests throwing a person closed in a sack into the water. We can notice the same vocabulary used in the comedy uh, Vidularia, and this is the next passage, number eight. So we can notice uh, here um, how someone will be uh, sewn up, so in sui, in a sack, in culo, and thrown, this is the verb deportari, into the water, in altum. The expressions from uh, Pseudolus are Similar, I will make you thrown, so te ipsam faciam ut deportere, in a sec, culo. Only the last element is different and surprising. Instead, in altum, into the water, or in mare, for example, we have in pergulam, so to the brother shed. Although the syntax is the same, and the audience, probably hearing the proposition in, expects a further expression depicting the known punishment. And the last word, pergulam, is to create the whole joke in the passage. But what is fascinating, that it resembles a word perulam, so it is a small sack, a, sack, a small bag, yes? So it is possible that the audience, um, when heard in per, Yes, and uh, the ictus in the, met in the meter goes on pair, so it is strongly pronounced, uh, maybe expected per perulam. I don't know, this is a hypothesis. Um, this word pergula um, is also in another passage, so this is number nine, uh, from the same comedy, so it is later expressed also by the spimp Balio, we have Pergulam. Uh, so it is also here referring to carrying the business of a brother. Uh, but what is interesting that we have this, uh, this word combined uh, in the text with the word, word choreo. So corium means a skin, yes? And skin of animals was used to make a sack. So I don't know, this uh, reference would be very far, yes? But perhaps uh, there is one. Although uh, corio doesn't mean him a skin of a, an animal, but the skin of a girl. 
yes, and the skin uh, is mm, penite also, it is scarlet, it is red because it is flogged by a pin. Nevertheless, we need to admit that in the passage number seven from the comedy Pseudolus, we may observe a reference to the punishment of the sect. <clears throat> There's only one more thing I would like, I would like to uh, consider. Cicero wrote, wrote, uh, writes in his work De Inventione that the criminal sentence to be sown in a sack for the crime of parasite was held in prison until the large sack was made ready. Yet some scholars believe that while the punishment was executed, the sack used to transport wine might have been exploited as well as readily available. I wonder if we don't learn from Plotus' passage that a sack used to carry oil was also suitable to execute this punishment. As we may see in the Cato's uh, De Agricultura, this, this is passage, this is the last one, the passage number two, 10. Culeus was used to carry, yes, so deportare, we have the same um, expression, uh, deportare oil just like in Plotus' comedy. Moreover, if we go back to the first analyzed passage from Epidicus, yes, so <coughs> this is passage number three, we will find the evidence for using food bags in, during this punishment, yes? So as I said before, the slave says here that he will, he will take an old man in a money bag while others take him peratum, so they take him in a food bag. Yes, so they use this sack for food. Although the passage contains a joke, I presume that it also uh, proves how the punishment, punishment might, <laughs> might have been executed. Yes, I'm finishing. <laughs> yes. Um, and the last thing is passage from Vidularia. So if we uh, look at eight, there is also proof uh, that the sack for food might have been used during this punishment because uh, a man that is put in a sack will become a nona, yes? So we, he will become uh, a food supply, of course, a food supply for fish, yes? Uh, but this is, this is a proof that uh, a food sack might have been used during this punishment. So, uh, concluding, we need to say that there are many references to this punishment, uh, to this crime. Um, so, we may, we may find it in Epidicus, yes, the wordplay on parenticida. Um, the punishment is also um, described in Vidularia, yes, in Pseudolus, uh, and in Vidularia we can see the whole punishment, yes, and there are evidence, uh, there is much evidence that the food sex were used to execute this punishment. So, this is all. Thank you. Yes.